Okay, hi everybody. Welcome back. Appreciate you watching. I want to take a little bit of time to talk about when you're doing a stroked engine. What you mean by a stroked engine is something where the crankshaft has a larger throw. This is a stock 50, 59 millimeter stroke crankshaft for like a 212. You can get a 56 millimeter, 58 millimeter, 59 millimeter, and you can even offset grind this journal, smaller journal, get them even longer than that. But when you do that, your crankshaft is spinning. When you have the larger stroke, the longer stroke, you're making a bigger circle inside of the engine block. And so you couple that with an upgraded billet or forged rod. Those are now even bigger in dimension than the stock rod because they're better and they're stronger you may run into clearance issues. You, the rod and the crank may hit certain sections of the block, like at the base of the cylinder jug. The dipper may hit the side of the block. The rod may impact the camshaft. This area here of the crank could impact the camshaft, depending on what kind of cam you're running and all that. So you're gonna have to do some work. Even if you have a Predator 224, a Wildcat 223, a Ducar 223, whatever, you may have to do some clearancing in there with that longer stroke. So nothing is just drop in. So I'm going to take a little bit in this video to show you what's required. No two are going to be exactly identical, I'll be honest with you. Um, it really just depends on which parts you got and the combo and the block you got. But this will give you a good idea of what you got to do. You got to take your time. You got to do it right. And when you do, that engine is going to work and it's going to last a good long time. So let's take a look. All right. So we have our crankshaft, our piston, and our rod installed. I don't have any rings on the piston. I just have it sitting in the cylinder. For a rod, I'm using an ARC 6270, which is the standard length 3.303. For like a GX200, something along those lines. It has the 1.180 journal and has the uh, Honda clone GX200 flywheel taper. So this crankshaft came from NR Racing and it's 58 millimeter stroke. I'm really happy with it. You can see it's been clearanced here, clearanced here on the counterweights, and yeah, it makes for a lot easier fit. I'm not saying you're not going to have to do some work to it for certain applications, but in quite a few, you're not going to. So let's just look and see where this engine is going to interfere. So right now you have the piston at top dead center. We're going to move it in the direction of crank rotation. Okay, now right here, this doesn't hit. A lot of times they will hit. Um, this one is not, but boy, it is sure coming close. So I don't want to leave it like that. So I'm going to mark it. And we're just going to take a little bit of meat off that. Not a big deal. So then we're going to spin it on around. And wow, our dipper gets very, very close. Again, it doesn't hit. Most of the time they do. This one isn't. But we're going to just clearance it just to be safe. So, so far, so good on this. Now, let's spin that crank around some more. Uh-oh. We're interfering with the bottom of the cylinder. So, I'm going to mark it on that side. And we're just going to take a minimal, minimal amount off. Okay, so that's really uh, the work we're going to have to do. I have a high lift camshaft in this and I had to do some clearancing there. I'll show that here in a little bit. To make the cuts, I'm going to use this Milwaukee 12 volt cordless die grinder. I have a uh, spiral flute single cut or an Aluma cut bit in there that'll make really quick work of it. I'm not trying to make it look beautiful, I'm just trying to get clearance. So I'm going to spare you guys watching me do that. It's going to be kind of hard to get down in there and film at the same time. And God forbid I slip and run that thing into the cylinder. 
but I have my block ready to go here. You can see my marks. I've got some duct tape over my bearings so I don't get chips in there. And uh, hopefully we can do this right and get this block ready to go. Okay, we got all our clearancing work done. I actually spotted another thing I want to clearance here. I'll show you that in a second. But spinning just fine. So as we come around on this bottom part of the cylinder, we have that clearanced. We got plenty of clearance up there, about 60 thousandths. The new spot I want to hit is right here. That rod bolt comes just kind of close. I think it'll be fine, but if this crank starts flexing and dancing around, I just want to make sure. And then as we come down here, the dipper's got a good probably 80 thousandths clearance. I probably went a little too far. So I'm not worried about that at all. Once we get it assembled, this is going to be a good running engine. Okay, I told you another area of potential interference is the cam lobe to the bottom of the cylinder. Now, if you're running like a 265, 275, 285 lift cam, probably not going to be a problem. Even a 308, I've never seen this like on a dyno 308. But this is a 320 lift cam, and it typically happens on the intake lobe. Could happen on the exhaust. But right here on the bottom of the cylinder, it can hit. So I've just, you know, probably taken about a hundred thousandths off of that. Now I got plenty of clearance. I didn't have any issues on the exhaust side. So that's another thing to watch out for. So many guys just buy parts without knowing what they have, without thinking, without measuring, without checking, and they slap things together and they just create a disaster. Don't be that guy. You know, do this stuff right. And if you're not sure, you don't have mechanical aptitude, you don't have the patience, find a guy like me. I'm not the only one out there doing this stuff. So just something else you got to look out for. Okay, another area of interference is here on the camshaft. The connecting rod was hitting that. So I have a six inch bench grinder with a three quarter inch wide wheel. I just go in there and massage that a little. Dino Cam sells some specifically for 224 strokers that are already pre clearanced. So those aren't a bad deal, but you know, if you don't want to their grinds, then you got to buy somebody else's cam and you're going to have to clearance it. This also has a thin compression release, which is kind of like for a stroker engine. Um, other cams may not. They'll have a different style mechanism, and you may have to clearance the crankshaft in that case. Now, with this crank from NR Racing, I really like it. It's already pre-clearanced. You know, it's been up in a lathe, and that's been machined off. You know, if it hit, you could probably take a little more off, but it probably would be just fine. So make sure you're using the right combination of parts. You check, and you know what you're doing, guys, because, boy, if you don't, you're going to be in a world of hurt. And there we are. It is a short block. What was interesting on this one after getting everything clearance and doing the final assembly, I checked my ring in gap. And I have never had rings from Tillotson or EC Carburetor or NR Racing. Anybody ever need to be filed to get the end gap right. These were almost closed. I had to file quite a bit to get my end gap right. So... That just goes to show, guys, never, ever, ever assume. Always check. Always measure. Make sure you're doing it right. If you do it right, your engine's going to work. It's going to last a long time. But, like I said, it's a short block. Spins over nice. Now, this one's going to be 226.4 cc. The reason for that is, yeah, we have the 58 millimeter stroke crank, but we bored the cylinder 20 thousandths oversized. So it's 70.5 millimeter diameter bore. So that comes out to 226.41 cc. So it's not a 223. In fact, anything that's advertised as a 224, like a Predator 224, it's actually a 223, just a FYI. But this one is a genuine 226. I'm still not sure what cylinder head I'm going to put on it. I'm probably going to do 28, 25, or 27, 25 valves. What I'm thinking is probably a shred head. I'm kind of up in the air on whether I like those things or not. I, I like the design. The casting quality is a little suspicious, if you ask me. But uh, they seem to work. I might run one of those. 
or I don't know, I might go with something else. My favorite cylinder head for all around use is the Wildcat 946 from EC. It is outstanding, but I, I just don't think this engine's going to need that big intake valve. So we'll probably just go with the 2725 or 2825. I was looking at the heads on my shelf. All I got is a Hemi head, and I don't want to use that. Throw those in the trash. So I'll, I'll figure out something, come up with something, and get it on there. I had to order a starter cup. Ordered a few of those from EC. That is the best place to get those. You need uh, recoil starter, starter cups, flywheel nuts, eccarbs.com. They got the best price. And I thought I had oil fill caps but i cannot find them i usually keep a bag of those but they are nowhere to be found i don't know if i put them somewhere and just used them all and didn't realize it but i'll look for them if i have to i'll get more i can get my coil on it and side cover and this thing will be ready to fire up i'll probably just run a pwk 24 carb on it it's about the best all-around carb for something of this displacement and it should run good so everybody like, subscribe. We are really, really close to 500 subscribers if we have not gotten there by the time you see this. I want to get to 1,000. I want to get to 10,000. I want to get to 100,000. Um, this thing has really taken off better than I thought it would for just goofing around. And I think maybe some people are actually enjoying this information and finding it useful. I sure hope so. Am I the best at this? No, but I tell you what. As we go along and I show people things, I'm learning at the same time. And, you know, you never stop learning stuff. Never, ever, ever stop learning stuff. If you think you know it all, you have a problem. So, you know, watch these videos that I put out. Watch guys like Redbeard's Garage, Cars and Cameras, and even the automotive guys, David Vizard, Brian Salter, uh, Eric Weingartner, uh, Richard Holdner. All those, you, there's a ton to learn about engines and engine building and uh, black 66 has got a great channel and yeah i hope i can be up there with those guys one of these days uh, diy willie is another one and he i know he watches this channel and there's just some good stuff out there and there's a lot to learn and as we go along we can all learn more and uh i hope to have the world's fastest mini bike one of these days maybe not me with me on it but i want it to have my engine on it so maybe that'll happen. We're going to see what we can do. Have a good one.